Hello everyone and welcome back to Lasers Woodshop. Today I'm going to build a piano cabinet. It's not for a real piano, it's just a shell for a keyboard though. But it's made to look like an old time upright piano. The initial designs look plain but I'm going to dress it up a bit. Alright, let's rock and roll. I'm going to start off by gluing the base and the side panels. These are going to be made from inch and three quarter solid oak. And they will be pretty heavy pieces when they're done. The final product has to withstand lots of use on stage. So they've got to be solid to meet the needs of that environment. I'm going to use biscuits for alignment and I'm going to make these slightly oversized so I can trim the ends square later. Alright, now that those are done I'm going to start work on the dados on the base. One side, uh, there's going to be one dado on each side, and then there's going to be a rabbit in the back. First, I'm going to draw a line to make sure there will be enough meat to hold on the side, because the side is very heavy. Then I'm going to use a straight edge to guide the router and the inch and three quarter bit. I'm going to make several passes to make the cut safely. I'm not using the table saw for this because the, the, the piece is too heavy and uh, I can't really handle this base piece by myself. Now the side pieces are a little bit lighter and I can make the dados on the table saw down one side. Then I'm going to make a stop dado on the short side of this piece. This stop dado will hold on the, the front piece. I'm going to use a chisel to square the corners of this dado and I'm just going to work carefully here to avoid taking out too much. First you got to establish the walls on the bottom and the side. and then you're going to use the chisel bevel down to chop the parts that you don't need. Check the depth of the dado with the combination square and keep working until it's good. Now I'll start on the notch on the front of each side. These notches are necess necessary to keep the entire piece held together. I'm going to make the marks and then I'm going to saw down to the line. On the, on the front piece, uh, on the front side, I meant, uh, I'm going to use a knife to establish a shoulder. And I'm going to use this shoulder to put the saw in because it's easier to start the saw on the face grain if there's like a little shoulder here. Next I have one niece and nephew to help me fit the front piece. Then I'll cut the top and bottom back pieces to fit. Now I'll cut the vertical back pieces to fit once those are all done, I'll set them to the side. Next, I'll lay out where the diagonal pieces are going to go. Each diagonal is an inch and a half in width, and I'll use a four inch spacer between each one. I start with one chalk line at an angle that's not quite 45 degrees, on purpose here because I don't want it to look necessarily like a picture frame I just want it to have an angle to it and then I go from there 
Now that all the diagonals are laid out, I'm going to start gluing the top, bottom, and vertical pieces onto the back plywood piece. Gluing the top and bottom here are easy enough. Those are just made flush and glued in place. Then I attach the first piece on the right, and I cut a spacer to use as a guide. This spacer will make the next piece square, and also make sure the piece is in the correct position. I'm trying to emulate a soundboard on an antique piano, and each section of the soundboard is smaller and smaller, so I'm going to cut the spacer after each piece is glued and nailed, and then I'll let the whole thing dry overnight. Now I can find the angle of the diagonal pieces and lock that down using my bevel gauge. I'll set the miter saw using the bevel gauge and then I'll make all the diagonal pieces. I'm just going to make them oversized for now and I'm going to cut to fit as I go. The, the diagonals that meet the top and bottom have slightly different angles so I got to use the bevel gauge for those cuts as well. You might also notice that these diagonal pieces are slightly thinner than the vertical pieces. I planed them down to a half an inch so I would get a 3D look and again make it look antique -y. Not even sure if that's a word. After everything is cut to fit, I'm going to glue and nail everything in place. I'm going to work on each diagonal at a time to make sure everything lines up. This is what it might look like when it's complete. Next, I'll cut the edging for the top piece. These are mitered and cut to fit as I go around. There's also a cleat that locks the top to the front of the cabinet. I had to wait for the custom legs to arrive to know exactly how long they were, but now I can attach the bottom piece to both sides and round over the top of each leg. Next I'll attach the wheels to the base. Being a musician myself, I know that there are always a snake pit of cords and wires on stage. Therefore I used four and a half inch wheels so the cabinet won't topple over mid-song because that would really suck. Now I'll round over all the necessary edges and glue the legs in place. You just want to make sure the leg is centered on the side. After that, I'll attach the decorative front piece and the trim on the sides. Sorry I didn't video those steps. But the front piece is attached with glue and nails, and the trim is just mitered and cut to fit.
Next comes a coat of ebony stain using my HBLV sprayer. My awesome sister is helping me here. She rocks. After the stain is dry, I can do a test assembly. First I put the left side on, then the back is set in place, then the right side is set, next I'll put the front piece on, then the top locks everything down. After the test, I'll spray everything with six coats of lacquer. This one's ready to rock and roll. Thanks for watching. Please subscribe to my channel. Also, you can check out my new webpage at laserswoodshop.com.